Chiefs fans, we've got a Super Bowl rematch coming up this weekend. The Chiefs face off versus the San Francisco 49ers. And if you're like me, you may be wondering, why are the 49ers 3-3? Three and three? They're supposed to be this awesome team. What's been going on in San Francisco? I'm your host, Gary McKenzie. Welcome to another episode of RGR Football. And we're going to dive into the 49ers a bit, heading up into this matchup between the Chiefs and 49ers. Because if you're like myself, you may be wondering, why the heck are the 49ers 3-3? Three and three? What has gone wrong in San Francisco for this team who has seemingly been nearly unbeatable the past several years? So, week one, the 49ers beat the New York Jets 32-19. Week two, they went and they faced off versus the Minnesota Vikings. This was early on in the season. No one knew what the Vikings were going to be at that point in time in the season. And the Vikings beat the 49ers by a score of 23-17. to So what happened in that game? Well, for the most part, it seemed as though the 49ers offense played pretty well in that game. But there were two things they did very poorly. One was protect Brock Purdy. He was sacked six times in that game versus the Vikings, which is a ton. And then the... 49ers went 2 for 10 on third down in that game. Those two factors are the main reasons why the 49ers lost that week two matchup versus the Vikings. And I also think they were a bit caught off guard with how good the Vikings were going to be to start the season. I don't think many teams predicted or expected the Vikings to be that good to start the year. Moving on to week three. The 49ers faced off versus the Los Angeles Rams. And the 49ers, throughout about 90% of the game, dominated. They controlled the, the, the game. They were up by two touchdowns for a large portion of the game. But in the final seven minutes, the 49ers' defense gave up 13 points, and they ended up losing that game versus the Rams by a score of 24-27. to 27. So this is a late collapse by both the offense and the defense that cost them this game versus the Rams. Week four, they played the New England Patriots, and they won that game by a score of 30 to 13. Week five, they played the Arizona Cardinals, and they lost by a score of 23 to 24. This, in my opinion, was a game that Kyler Murray really wanted to win. He was running the ball a lot. He got 83 rushing yards in that game. But and, but what really killed the 49ers in that game was that they turned the ball over three times. It's hard to win in the NFL if you're turning the ball over three times. Week six, last week, they saw the Seattle Seahawks, and they won 36-24. to 24. So in a microcosm, what has San Francisco done to lose these games? They've essentially been the opposite of the Chiefs. They have not came through and performed when the moment most needed them to do so, whereas the Chiefs have been on the opposite end of that spectrum. They have been winning games and finding ways to win and coming through in the biggest moments of the game regularly this season. And so it's a tale of kind of two stories for both these teams. The San Francisco 49ers have been finding ways to lose games and haven't been closing out games, whereas the Chiefs have been closing out games, even if it was just by a toenail or, you know, a batted pass or grinding the clock down. The Chiefs are just finding ways to win in 2024, whereas the 49ers have been finding ways to lose. And because of this, I think that the Chiefs have somewhat of an advantage coming into this game because if you have a team reeling that's having difficulty finishing games, sometimes that can get in your mentals a bit. And you're thinking late in the game, okay, well, what's it going to be now? Who's going to fumble the ball? Who's going to drop a pass? Uh, You start getting this mindset that can be detrimental to your team. Speaking of detrimental to your team, another thing that's plagued the 49ers so far this year are injuries. So we know the Chiefs have have a lot of injuries on the offensive side of the ball with players like Isaiah Pacheco, Rasheed Rice, Uh, Hollywood Brown hitting the IR and the Chiefs offense you know for the for the most part has seemingly continued to do what it's been doing for the past couple years 
even with those players out. Now, it's helped that Kareem Hunt has came in and filled the role for Isaiah Pacheco, but Juju Smith-Schuster has also picked up and filled the role that Rasheed Rice left out. And I mentioned on Twitter earlier this week that I do believe the Chiefs have the offensive weapons that they need to win the Super Bowl and complete the three-peat currently as their roster is constructed. I think that Xavier Worthy is just going to get better as the year progresses. He's been getting open. It's just going to have to take Mahomes to get that trust and that rapport and to start look his way more often. And that's going to open up a lot of things for this offense. And in addition to that, Juju Smith-Schuster, he's still young. He's not like a grandpa in terms of NFL wide receiver ages. I think he's in his uh, late 20s, 28, 29 years old. That's still a prime year for a wide receiver. You saw how he looked in 2022 with the Chiefs. I think we can get a version of that, or we can get that version of Juju Smith-Schuster back on the 2024 Chiefs. I think that he looked like a bad player in New England because he had no one throwing him the ball. And for whatever reason, I think that Juju Smith-Schuster and Mahomes have this kind of synergy between each other where they expect, uh, where where Mahomes can expect where Juju's going to be and Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be there. And this is an invaluable ability that Juju Smith-Schuster has when he's paired with Mahomes. So the Chiefs have been dealing with these injuries, but they've found a way to have that next man up mentality and replace the huge voids left by players that have been missing uh, in the lineup because of injury. The 49ers, on the other hand, not necessarily that they haven't been able to have the next man up. It's just been a deluge of injuries for the 49ers. Looking at the 49ers injury injury report for this week, there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Over 10, over 10 players are on the injury report. Of those 10, six of them did not practice this week as far as Wednesday's practice goes. We'll know more about Thursday's practice later today. But six players for the 49ers did not participate in practice on Wednesday. That's Jawan Jennings. He has a hip injury. Trent Williams, he needed some rest. Malik Collins, he has a knee. Leonard Floyd also has some rest. And then they have two kickers, Jake Moody and Matthew Wright, who are both on the did, did not participate in practice list. And so in a tight game like this, it could be that the game comes down to a field goal and you have two kickers that are banged up. And the simple fact that they have two kickers on the roster says enough that they don't have a lot of faith in at least one of them to be able to play and perform. So this game could be decided by a kicker that's not feeling the best. So it's... Uh, it's been a problem for the 49ers this year. So while they haven't been able to close games out, they've also dealt with a lot of injuries. And that has hurt them. Whenever you have 10-plus players showing up on your injury report, and then in addition to that, they have seven players that are currently on IR, that's a tough battle to overcome when a third of your team is injured and in some way hurting. The Chiefs have four players total on the injury report, and three of them were full participants in practice on Wednesday. The only player who was not a full participant in practice was Mike Dana. He has a pectoral issue. Not sure if he's going to be able to play versus the 49ers, but that gives a chance for Felix and Udike to come in and show what he can do. So with all these injuries the 49ers have faced, they have still been a good team. They have the number uh, eight scoring offense in the NFL. They have the second most yards per game in the NFL. And what what they're doing offensively is they're running the ball a lot. So it's a typical Shanahan offense where you're going to run the ball a ton, and it doesn't matter sometimes who's going to run the ball. Uh, They're going to get their yards. So right now, the 49ers have ran the ball the fifth most in the NFL. And they have the third best rushing yards per game and the seventh best yards per attempt. So this game, I believe, is going to be dictated by the trenches. Whether the Chiefs can stop this rushing attack for the 49ers is going to have a big outcome in this game. 
If the, if the Chiefs can force the 49ers to have a lot of third and longs in this game, it's going to put more pressure on their pass offense. It's going to put more pressure on Brock Purdy. And we saw in their week two matchup, or their, or yeah, their week two matchup versus the Vikings, they went two for ten on third down. So I think the Chiefs can replicate this type of game where they stop the run early, force the 49ers to have to co- convert third and long, and then they can shut the 49ers down on third down. So it's going to be up to first and second down, particularly first down in this Chiefs 49ers matchup for the Chiefs to stop the rush attack for the 49ers. Fortunately for the Chiefs, they have one of the best run defenses in the NFL, currently allowing only 3.1 yards per rush attempt. Currently, they're fourth in yards per rushing attempt allowed. And then in addition to that, according to the defensive SRS score, which is a value calculated by Pro Football Reference, it's a, it essentially uses matrix math and compares every team's score against each other and then evaluates your team, team based on that matrix. So essentially it's saying that, okay, the Chiefs have played these five teams and these five teams have played this well versus these other four teams. And how do the Chiefs stack up in this matrix calculation? And according to that, the Chiefs have the number one defense in the NFL. Even though they don't have the best points per game defense in the NFL, they have the number one defense because they've played some of the better scoring offenses and held them to well below their average throughout the year. So this is a game that I think the Chiefs defense will be tested because the 49ers still have awesome awesome weapons on offense. Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, they're not going anywhere. George Kittle's there. Doesn't matter who's running the ball for them. They're going to be all over the field creating havoc. And so the Chiefs defense, if the Chiefs win, it's going to be the Chiefs defense that wins this game for them. I don't think it's going to be the Chiefs offense. It's going to be the Chiefs defense that wins this game. And if I was a betting man, I would be pulling the under on this game. I don't know what the over or what the total is, but I would be pulling the under. I think this is going to be a defensive game. And to start the year, I predicted that the Chiefs would start the season 5-0. and And then I said they would lose this game versus San Francisco. Do I go back on my prediction? Or do I kind of do check the vibe and see the way that the 49ers are playing? And I will just say this. In life, you might make a decision a year ago, six months ago. And then you look at more information and you would be a fool. To stick with your former idea or your former plan. You got to roll with the changes. And I'm rolling with the changes. The 49ers have been a team so far this year that have sporadically struggled to win games. Have difficulty finishing games. They're being ravaged. They've been ravaged by injuries. The Chiefs are a team that knows how to win games. They're playing the best defense perhaps of the entire Patrick Mahomes era. And so I think this is the game that the Chiefs go in and beat San Francisco in a tight game by a score of 20 to 17. I think the Chiefs win 2017. Comes down to a field goal by one of these banged up kickers for San Francisco and they don't get the job done. Let me know though in the comments what you think about that prediction. Do you think the Chiefs go into, into San Francisco and win this football game? What do you think the keys are for the Chiefs to stop the 49ers? Do you think it's all centered around the run? Or do they need to focus on trying to rush Brock Purdy? Because if you look at his numbers, he's terrible against the Blitz. So do you think it's up to Spagnolo to Blitz Purdy and make him uncomfortable in this game? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have not done so already, hit that like button and subscribe. We're getting so close to 30,000 subscribers. I can almost sniff it. But... We appreciate and love all of you for for joining us here, watching the channel. Got nothing but love and respect for you guys. Let's go, Chiefs. Let's see if they can pull off a win in San Francisco. Let's see if I can uh, have this little prediction here right. But that's it. This is Gary signing out. Y'all have a good rest of your week. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.